guys and welcome to my channel today I'm creating a DIY farmhouse wall decor this is made out of just um, I think there were four by eight pieces that I cut into four by four pieces and I have two of them and then I just had some scrap wood uh, to uh, kind of put the pieces together I wanted to create something that I can use in my fall decor and Christmas decor a sign that um, I've seen on Pinterest and Instagram people had it and I thought they looked so good with all these seasonal decors and I did not have one so I wanted to create one so off to Home Depot I went picked up these uh, two pieces of uh, so like I said four by eight I think they were and I cut them into four feet um, I um, picked them up I think they were sixteen dollars each which was pretty steep comparing to what they used to be and uh, just um, and like I said the other ones I had uh, on hand and I also want to say that I um, was going to and I actually did end up screwing it after uh, the two two boards uh, use uh, originally when I started off I could not find the screw gun for the life of me and it turned out that it was in a car with my husband so I ended up uh, in this video just gluing them with wood glue which I would have done anyways but then I would have secured it also with screws but because at the time of the video I didn't have the screw gun so I just did hot glue just to keep it in place and then I went again and I just added the screws just so it, it is more secure so here you see me adding the hot glue and the wood glue and then I uh, had to add some tape to it just to keep it in place because uh, the hot glue wasn't really working very well once the tape was on and it was holding well I just gave it a couple minutes before turning it uh, flipping it over and once I flipped it over, here is where the fun part starts. So I wanted my sign to be very rustic, very farmhousey, something that looked like it's been around for a very long time. So I ended up adding several different acrylic paints to it first. So I'm going to add um, blue, I am going to add Christmas red, hunter green, and then stormy gray as well, and as uh, a dark gray as well too. And I'm going to finish it off with some Annie Sloan original chalk paint. I wanted to say thank you for stopping by and watching this video, and if this is your first time stopping by, my name is Sonia and you are watching my DIY channel. I create most of my home decor that I use in my house on this channel as well as furniture upcycles and I do some thrift, uh, trash to treasure thrift store flips. So I would love it if you consider subscribing, pressing the notification bell so you don't miss out any of my future uploads. So now it's time to paint it and I am just doing random brush strokes of all the paints. And I'm doing them more so in the corners rather than right in the middle. Uh, in the middle, I am going to go with the dark gray. And I'm going to add a more of a solid color in here. Uh, just because this is where the lettering is going to go. So I want this to be a little bit of a better coverage. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I will have several of these DIY decor pieces in the next couple of postings just because I wanted to, there are several pieces that I wanted to create for my future fall decor uh, that I want to use in my decor as kind of a, like a grounding pieces uh, and then I'm going to embellish it with all the fall decor. So I wanted to create these pieces before I dive into fall decor which is coming in like a week and a half and I'm super excited to start sharing all the different DIYs that I have um, planned out to make for you guys. So make sure that notification bell is on. So once the paint that I was applying was exactly the way I wanted, I had cut out a stencil, well more of like letters, out of my vinyl on my Cricut Maker. And now I'm just trying to figure out the positioning. So I'm just trimming some of the letters down and uh, so I can see exactly where I want everything to go. 
you want it to be somewhat centered, I think that would probably look the best. And once I have it exactly where I want it, I uh, proceed to transferring it on. Also would like to know, do you guys enjoy um, stuff that I make from Cricut uh, and showing you different designs and different things I make with my Cricut maker? Do you prefer no Cricut at all? I don't think that is possible, but um, I'd like to kind of have a mixture, show you some stuff that you can make with the Cricut as well as without using Cricut because I know some of, some of you might not have one or might have a different machine. So I like to uh, show variety. I would love to know which ones you enjoy. Do you enjoy both or, or just one specific one? So let me know in the comments. So I absolutely love the way this design turned out and the way it looks on this board. I actually like it just as it is, but I am not done. Make sure you stay tuned till the end. So once you transfer all of these on, you want to make sure that they're pressed down well. So when you proceed to painting the whole piece, you don't have any leakage. Um, so pretty much saying you want it on as well as if you were leaving the vinyl on. Now that my vinyl is on, I will be painting with any Sloan original chalk paint, which used to be called Old White. I always say that because I'm so used to saying Old White and then they change the name for it. And you want to make sure that you are using chalk paint because chalk paint is gives you a lot better effect when it's sanded down than an acrylic paint. Um, could you use acrylic paint? Of course you could. But I'm just saying to achieve the effect that I'm going for a chalk paint is the easiest and the best to use. Now, painting over red, you will always have a little bit of uh, bleeding through. Now, I was okay in this particular incident because you will see at the end why. But just giving you a heads up that if you ever paint over any red paint, uh, it, it does tend to bleed even with chalk paint. There are primers that you can buy to prevent that or just paint it over. If you don't want the red to show, paint it over with black first and then with white paint. So I'm going heavy on the sides, but in the middle I'm not applying as much uh, because I, I wanted that to be more of a brushed um, look than rather solid color. But as you can see on the sides, I am applying more because I need to um, be able to um, have more to work with when sanding it down. So once I have painted this the way I wanted it to look, I proceed to removing the letters immediately. And you want to do this because um, that way you don't have the tearing of the paint. Because even, even when you're painting your house or anything like that, if you have any painter's tape, I always find that it's better to remove it right away because uh, that way you're not tearing the paint because uh, sometimes if you have a blob of paint anywhere and you pull that paint that tape tape off or the letters off it can pull the paint with it 
I was intending to save these letters for a different project, but it just didn't work out. So I ended up just uh, taking them and ripping them apart as I was removing them. Now at this point I felt as if my board was missing something so I am adding a stormy gray acrylic paint just to create a border. It doesn't have to be perfect, I wasn't looking for perfect but I was looking for a very light application. And once I was done with the border, I let the whole piece dry for several hours so that way when it comes to sanding, I was able to sand it exactly the way I wanted. And I am just using a random sandpaper that I found in a garage because the one that I had, uh, the sanding block that I had from the dollar store had no grit on it anymore so it wasn't really sanding anything down and I'm literally sanding the whole piece going really heavier on the sides and little less in the middle because I wanted that green as well as blue and red to kind of bleed through a little bit show show a little bit to give me that uh, age rust rustic look uh, that I was looking for in this sign I am also going over the letters and sanding them as well. I think this just blended the piece more in and it gave it that look like it, the letters have always been there kind of thing. There was no, any, no signs of border from the paint or anything like that. Then I removed all the dust with the rag and then I went in and just dry brushed a little bit more of that Annie Sloan White. And I'm saying my brush was almost dry. Um, just to e create even more of a blend with the paint. At this point you can create, you can apply uh, either wax or some clear, some form of a clear coat if you wish to. So here it is. What do you guys think? I absolutely love it. It came out exactly the way I had envisioned this project to turn out to turn out the way I wanted it to turn out and I can't wait to decorate with it for fall and Christmas. If you have enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below letting me know that you did so that way I know that you like these type of videos. And don't forget to press the subscribe button if you're brand new to my channel as well as the notification bell so you don't miss out any of my future uploads. Until next time, hope you guys have a wonderful day and thank you all so much for watching.